your body is what vessel. We will speak when, we, when I use the word tantra, it means actually vessel. Mantra, the vessel of uh, this kind of, um, of a sound vibration, primordial sound. Ma, mother is the primordial sound. Sound, fire, vibration, all one and the same. Just different words. Tantra, the vessel of that, meaning again the high frequency. Yantra, yantra, the vessel of self, yantra. So people use different geometrical things. And then they empower it with the intention and energy, and they become the vessel of that. Let's say uh, Yantra Vurga, which is two inversed triangles, for example. It's a transmission. It's like encoded language, right? When you become a, a vessel of meditation, you become a great symbol. All of these are just secret kind of language, you know, met metaphorical. So when you become Maha Mudra, Maha means great, or Maga, Maga Mudra, if it's South Indian language. So, great symbol. So, great symbol means you are so aligned within with a higher frequency. It's basically the natural absorption, but for a long time that you can stay in that relaxed position absolutely aware and blissful. That is Mahamudra. You must have heard the word Shambhavi Mudra, right? Shambhavi Mudra. Some gurus say, oh, I activate. It's the same thing as Mahamudra. It's the same. You see, we can look at it from, okay, this is a mudra or this is a whatever, some technique, right? And everyone thinks it's a technique. It's not a technique. You remember when I said, I don't close my eyes, but I keep my eyes open, like you now in what? You are in Shambhavi Mudra. This is spontaneous. It's like you feel slight magnetic feeling here, and it kind of absorbs you inside, and, and yet you can retain your active awareness not to close your eyes. But the eyes, you see, Look, the eyes are sort, somewhat are like upward, you know, like they are open, but they don't look outside. That is Shambhavi Mudra. The same word is Samadhi. The same word is Dhyan or meditation. The same word is Amanaska Yoga or Vasi Yoga. Again, Vasi means you reverse the vibration from the active breath which is out in, out in, into vertical, kind of more like vibration. Again, only in absorption. Amanaska means, A means no. Manas means mind. Amanaska yoga means you are absorbed in no mind, kind of, you know, inside, inside your consciousness. So all of these are just different synonyms. And it's important for you to remember that all of these are different synonyms. For one and the same thing. So how the healing and transformation happens on a spiritual level? It happens because you stay in that absorption longer. Amaruddha Prabodha, or like Amanaska Yoga. And you can see, this is a magnificent scripture. This scripture is also transmission. So this is a living scripture. Now, what I want you to read about, and you will feel it as an experience, and let it be stretched. Don't like rush in reading it. It will be experienced like, because there are several or many, many shlokas. So read one, two, three, and then next day again, and just contemplate. So you will understand a lot of things because of what I told you now. It will kind of all make sense, okay? Because you know the experience already. So you will start relating. The main point of Vasi Yoga, Amanaska Yoga, which are synonyms, right? Raja Yoga, 
all as synonyms. Raja Yoga was known as Rasa Yoga. Ras means nectar or semen, and Raja means kingly, royal, or it also means powerful, or it also means uh, menstrual blood. In reality, a Rasa Yoga, Rasa means nectar. Again, this was all about meditation absorption. So, Rasa Yoga, Raja Yoga, the same thing, Amanaska Yoga. Uh, um, Vasi Yoga, all one and the same, just different Kriya Yoga, same thing. Because you natural, because you awaken, so you naturally get absorbed. The point now is to be able to cultivate it for longer, and you will clearly see it in the scripture, because the yogi who describes it there will say, if you hold it for this, 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 and so. The deeper you get absorbed, the more you notice that your breath becomes shorter. It doesn't, you know, I'm not saying when you are breathing shortly in a bad way, you know. But in this case, it becomes absorbed because there's no movement. So when you are thinking, there is movement. In Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, in Sanskrit, it said chit, chit is consciousness, vritti. Vritti means spinning. Consciousness is spinning, no absorption. So, in Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, Patanjali was saying chit, vritti, nirodhaha. It means that once the mind, the movement of the mind subsides. So absorption is when the movement of the mind internalizes and then eventually subsides. So between these two points that it internalized and then it subside, you are diving deeper and deeper and staying longer and longer. So the longer you stay, the more you say, I'm cultivating myself spiritually. So it will rejuvenate you. At the start, you are disturbed by different energies like anxiety, parasitic energy, you know, that creates anxiety that disturbs your nerves from the intestinal area and in other organs. So once you neutralize physical parasitic energy, which is worms, fungi, uh, different chemicals, pathogens, heavy metals. So now your body is kind of relaxed naturally. No outside influences of lower frequencies affected that easily. So now you rest in that relaxed, peaceful state physically. So it means that your mind now starts seeing things clearer, becoming aware, and kind of the more you become aware, you detach from all these projections. And when you detach, your absorption becomes naturally deeper. And the deeper it becomes, the more you rejuvenate. First, first of course, it's not just rejuvenate. First, you heal, meaning you balance the energy. You understand what drains you on a subtle level. You start being more aware and sensitive towards karmic residue, thoughts, emotions, other people's shadows, other people's thoughts, emotions, you know. And so you start clearly creating higher frequency barriers by recognizing these patterns and clouds of emotions and thoughts within you and sort of not connecting your active awareness, your consciousness with these patterns. So you, um, I would say, you starve them. Or you may say you sever the links. So your consciousness is absorbed into something higher than that. And so that becomes a natural protective uh, barrier by frequency. Once you have this natural protective barrier, it's so easy to cultivate yourself through absorption. 
because nothing bothers you, it's not so easy to get out of that absorption anymore. Because at the start, you are disturbed by these shadows, these patterns, because, or even sometimes just creative pursuits, like you have all these ideas, how you would create your business or do this and that. So all these things dis uh, interrupt your meditation. And I don't mean meditation when you sit with your eyes closed, legs crossed. That's no meditation. That's just some sort of an attempt to do something with your physical body. Natural meditation is when you are experiencing, for example, while I'm speaking right now, right? It's a natural meditation, natural absorption, when you become absorbed without trying. So you cultivate this being, and then if there is any residue within your space of consciousness, it will take you eventually out of this meditative state, again into the projective mode. So the more you unbind yourself, the more you can say, I am renounced. So you can only be truly renounced through absorption, not physically renouncing or practicing uh, sexual celibacy. No, not at all. You truly renounce yourself when your mind is naturally absorbed at all times. And yet you manage to align yourself and integrate in such a way where you don't need to lose awareness of your physical substance or your physical vehicle, your vessel, and yet you still have the connection with the higher source or higher awareness at all times. That's called a uh, living awareness, higher living awareness through the physical body. Most of the people support uh, lower frequencies because their awareness is dispersed through different uh, low frequency paradigms. So even if they have glimpses of meditative state, it takes them out of that very easily. And so that's why I repeat myself continuously that um, you know natural meditation cannot be practiced. The moment you focus within and whatever of the projected nature, whatever your circumstances, people, situation outside of you, no longer matter, at least at that moment, you instantly get into meditative state. And I don't mean dissociating, because sometimes people, let's say they take medication because of whatever issues, mental issues. And so, and so they can also get into the state of slumber. So they're in a dissociative state. The difference is they're not having that active and higher awareness. It's not that blissful and empowering. It's more like a sort of a state of slumber. Narcissistic dissociation, dissociation of bipolar people, the same thing. So they can switch temporarily, but they are not aligned and there is a lot of still corruption and trauma in them which is the, um, the corrupt flow of energy within the subtle being. When I speak about natural meditation, at that moment when you are in that Amanaska Vasi or uh, when you are that great symbol, when you are in Shambhavi Mantra, all of these are synonyms, you simply, it's like you get into alignment. You experience deep relaxation and at the same time, your energy body experiences proper, aligned, balanced energy circulation. It's fulfilling. It's not numbing. It's not slumber. It's fulfilling. It doesn't kind of push you to drift into sort of an unconscious deep sleep or dream state. Not at all. Real absorption, meditative absorption, is when your awareness is still there, very active, but your body is so relaxed as if you are in a deep sleep, yet you are not sleeping. It's called yoga mudra again, another um, synonym for Mahamudra, Shambhavi Mudra, Amanaska Yoga, Samadhi meditation, all these things.
the same thing. People just create all these different divisions, dispersion, but different terms. But it's one and the same point that your heightened awareness, that awareness of your higher being starts penetrating so deep that you experience that bliss of a deep sleep and beyond without losing your awareness. Because normally you sleep at night, you have this glimpse of deep sleep, maybe for some hours, and you feel very relaxed and blissful. When you wake up, you feel very like fulfilled and nurtured. But during that time, you're completely oblivious about where you are, what is happening. Now, this is very different. Once you're called awakened, it means you can retain that awakened awareness throughout whichever state. And so the more you absorb within, the deeper that and the long, longer or longer lasting this experience is. And from experience, it transits into being. That's the, the whole point. So um, at the start, people drift into, you know, some sort of absorption, but then it becomes so blissful that they start losing their awareness and drifting into um, a dream state where different pictures just pass by and then they go into deep sleep, like sort of, they can even keep their mouth open, they can't move, it's sort of a vegetable state. And their awareness is some sort of partial because they eventually dive into deep sleep and maybe retain the active awareness and some shorter glimpses, but overall they are just sort of like under something, you know? So it means they're not integrated yet. And it's all very important information because you it's kind of a it's kind of to to map out for you what to expect and to see it in the perspective. Another point is to look at it from a breath standpoint. So when the, the more you absorb within, the more internalized your breath becomes to the point that it seems almost like it subsides. So yogis used to simplify the system of measuring their breath by seeing how far is the, the exhalation or for example, four fingers, the breath is four fingers or eight fingers long from the nose. So it means you're still very much active within the projection. Once it subsides, and again, people are crazy very often, obsessed, they start practicing this retention of like forceful retention, which only hurts and damages them. It's very, the most significant point is to remember that spirituality cannot be forced. Evolution cannot be forced. And if people force it, it will backfire. It will throw them back to the periphery where they don't want to be because they force and push it too much. So when you're naturally unbound, renounced, when you don't empower everything else outside yourself, you become naturally absorbed. Your breath subsides naturally. When you start retaining, practicing this breath retention, it, it just imbalances and it comes out differently. You know, it comes out as, as a disturbance elsewhere. You start, today you retain this breath, today you force something or stimulate yourself one way or the other. Tomorrow you start having dramas. Tomorrow you have a nervous breakdown. Tomorrow you overreact, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it is so important to remember that we are to embrace the flow within. If emotion comes, we own and embrace emotion. If it's uh, absorption, we are in absorption. If we cannot retain absorption, 
we drift into a dream state. Okay, but we, we at least are aware and we own the experience. That's the most important. Because if we don't own this experience, it becomes a struggle. A struggle and a competition between who I am now and, and who I want to be. And maybe who I want to be is an imaginary figure I can never be. So instead of trying and having this gap between who I would like to be because I just imagine myself something out of my unrefined state and who I am is, is a big, big gap or is a big problem there. Because if we embrace who we are and we say, yes, today I'm drifting into a uh, dream state. And I will be drifting into this dream state as long as my emotions are unrefined. But the, the more I let go, the more I, you know, detach myself from certain things, the more I prioritize my well-being and my natural state, the more, the deeper my meditations become, the more I retain awareness throughout the dream state and even deep sleep. So I start experiencing yoga mudra, shambhavi mudra, amanas, kavasi, whatever term you wish to use, mahamudra for much longer times, all right?